Hey, in today's video, I'm talking about the truth about protein powders. Do you need protein powders? What's the best protein powder? Is protein powder, getting protein from a protein powder, is that better, more effective than getting whole food based protein? We're gonna cover all of that. We're gonna cover the pros and cons of consuming protein powders. What's the best protein powder for your particular health goals as well? And so when we look at protein powders, right, big thing that I look at is, are we using that protein powder to increase muscle protein synthesis? For example, are you consuming that protein powder after a workout? Are you trying to increase your overall muscle tissue? And in general, I think that should be one of our main goals when it comes to the way that we eat in general. And I'm a, I'm a fan of a higher protein diet, and in particular, getting enough leucine, which is the key branch chain amino acid that has to do with muscle protein synthesis. For most people, they're gonna need two to three grams of leucine per meal in order to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Really depends on your weight, okay? And I've done other videos, other, other reports on you know, the, the leucine levels you need based on your weight. But for the average individual, let's say they need three grams of leucine, average 150 pound person. If you're 125 pounds or less, you might just need two and a half grams or two grams of leucine in a meal. Most proteins are roughly somewhere between eight to 10% leucine. So usually if you're consuming 30 grams of protein in a meal, you're gonna get somewhere between you know, two and a half to three grams of leucine in that meal. For example, eight beef is beef and eggs are 8% leucine. So you consume 30 grams of protein, you know, you're gonna get somewhere around two and a half grams of leucine from that. And so basically that's what you're looking at on a regular basis. You should be looking to get 30 plus grams of protein in a meal. Again, if you're lighter, you might consume a little bit less, 25 or 20 grams of protein in a meal to hit that leucine threshold. Now when it comes to protein powders, whey protein, which is comes from dairy, dairy has two main proteins, whey and casein. The whey protein itself is really strongly stimulates leucine. It has 11% leucine content. So it's highest in leucine, so it gets you need less whey protein to reach that muscle protein synthesis threshold. This is why whey protein, I consider the best muscle building protein powder out there. So whey protein is great. Now a caveat when you're consuming any type of protein powder is that when you process a protein into a powder, it actually becomes more insulogenic, meaning that it increases the insulin um, produced by your body in order to metabolize it. So if you consume, for example, a steak, and you're eating that steak and you're getting the beef protein from the steak, as opposed to kind of a, a hydrolyzed beef protein, you're gonna have a higher insulin spike with the hydrolyzed beef protein. If you're consuming something like cheese, which has whey protein in it, and then you're consuming whey protein, the whey protein is gonna stimulate more insulin. So if you're already dealing with insulin resistance, you don't want huge stimulations, you know, you don't want large stimulations of insulin. So it may be better to do a whole food based diet to get your insulin levels down for a period of time before you were to perhaps add in some level of protein powder. That's always a good idea. And so when we look at other types of protein powders, uh, let's say vegetarian protein sources, pea protein, rice protein, soy protein, hemp protein. These are the most common when it comes to plant-based proteins. All of them roughly about 8% leucine content in them. So pretty much equivalent to the protein sources like egg and beef, okay? Not quite as much as the whey protein. So when it comes to, if your goal is muscle protein synthesis, the best protein powder is whey protein. I recommend getting it from an organic, ideally a grass-fed, like a New Zealand, grass-fed whey protein, uh, which is a common one out there. Um, so you can get a really good quality whey protein, and it also typically has uh, immunoglobulins in it as well, right? So oftentimes they'll put in things like colostrum, and there's uh, biopeptides that are in the whey protein. So it can have a lot of great benefits. There's compounds in there, um, for example, like cysteine, which helps increase glutathione levels. So as long as you don't have a dairy allergy, in particular a whey, whey allergy, a lot of people have dairy allergies or sensitivities, their sensitivity is to the casein component of the dairy protein, not the whey. So as long as you're able to tolerate the whey without 
it increasing inflammation and you know, you're exercising and doing things to get your, keep your insulin down, I think whey protein, a grass-fed whey protein is a fantastic protein source to use. It's my favorite protein source to use. My second favorite is a collagen or bone broth protein. Now, collagen or bone broth protein have no leucine, right? They don't stimulate muscle protein synthesis, so they're in a different classification. When we consume a collagen or a bone broth protein, we're not actually gonna build muscle. We're not gonna stimulate muscle protein synthesis. But instead, it, they're very rich in glycine, hydroxyproline, and proline. And those are compounds that are very important for gut health, for helping um, with gut integrity, right? Intestinal, um, you know, reducing things like intestinal permeability, right? And helping to improve our immune system. Also very important for joint health, for the collagen in our joints, our skin, our nails. So really good for that. And I, I recommend kind of a combination of using, if you're using protein powders, whey protein is great. And then also using like a bone broth collagen, again, not counting that protein towards stimulating leucine and muscle protein synthesis, but instead getting the other amino acids, the high proline, glycine, the hydroxyproline, the collagen sources. See our ancestors, when they ate an animal, they would eat the collagenous regions, right? So if they had a, you know, a, a, a turkey leg, they would eat all around the joint capsule. So they get a lot of this collagenous protein or they would boil them and create a bone broth, a broth that was rich in these amino acids. In our society, we just eat muscle meats typically. And so we actually don't get enough of the glycine, the proline, the hydroxyproline. So consuming a collagen or bone broth protein, right, or even just drinking bone broth can be really helpful for balancing out those amino acids, but it doesn't replace the need for getting enough leucine, the 30 grams of protein that I recommend that we're consuming in each meal. And um, obviously we can get that, that protein from a processed protein powder or from whole food based protein, depending on our health goals and you know how good we do with the insulin stimulation that comes from consuming any sort of uh, powdered processed food like a protein powder. So that's key to remember. Now, what's better when it comes to you know, different types of plant proteins? It's gonna be really dependent upon how your body metabolizes these things. So soy we know has phytoestrogens in it. Definitely don't recommend soy for males, right? There is some research showing that possibly like an organic soy for females can be beneficial. Never get conventional soy um, because it's gonna be high in pesticides, herbicides, things like that. If you're gonna do soy, always get it organic. Uh, for some individuals, they do really poorly with rice protein. Others do fine with it. For some, they do great with a hemp protein or with a pea protein. So find, if you want to use a vegan-based protein, find the one that works best for you. I think you can do great with just a whey protein and a collagen bone broth protein, kind of that combination, if you're using protein powders, right? Again, that comes down to the question. Do you want to use a protein powder or you just want to get your protein from whole food-based sources? But if you're going to get a protein powder, you know, I really like whey protein. I really like collagen, bone broth protein. Plant-based proteins are fine, especially if you're, if you're sensitive to the whey. Then I could see for sure using either an egg protein, if you're, if you're able to tolerate egg, or a beef protein, or using a pea protein, hemp protein, rice protein in order to get the leucine levels, the leucine content that you need. Now, rice protein itself is not a complete protein, so you'll see it oftentimes mixed with like a pea protein, or a hemp protein or something like that to create the complete protein and to get enough of the branch chain amino acids. So you'll see that as well. Um, and that's, that's something to remember. With plant proteins, always as much as possible, getting them organic I think is you know, a really good idea. And a lot of times what you'll see on certain formulas, especially if they're medical grade formulas, is they'll actually add in a whole bunch of amino acids. So they'll actually add in additional amino acids in order to get the leucine levels up perhaps, or to get glutamine levels up. Glutamine we know is really good for helping heal and seal the gut. So for some medical-based formulas you will that, that, that practitioners are using, they'll actually add in additional ingredients, different things that perhaps help with liver detoxification, different amino acids that help support and heal the gut, that help to support lean body tissue. So there are a number of different formulas out there Again, there's these medical grade formulas, there's whey protein, plant proteins, collagen bone broth proteins, and uh, they're gonna have different unique benefits to each of them. Another thing that you may see out there as well is 
amino acid blends, essential amino acid blends or branch chain amino acid blends. I recommend if you're gonna get an amino acid blend, which I personally actually use, and I use it with my children too who are athletes, um, I recommend an essential amino acid blend, not just, a bran not just a branch chain amino acid blend. Branch chain amino acids, there's three of them. Leucine, like we talked about earlier, very, very important. Valine uh, and isoleucine. Those are all very important, but when it comes to essential amino acids, there's a whole bunch of different essential amino acids that we wanna get, and you can find a whole blend called a essential amino acid blend. And so you can take that in water, and those are free form amino acids. So they're really good because they bypass the digestive system, go right into the system, are great for energy and stimulating muscle protein synthesis. So great if you're uh, doing a workout fasted, they can help improve the workout. Or if you're after your workout, and it's gonna be a little while before you eat, taking something like that will help improve muscle protein synthesis. Also, if you're an athlete, and you do best when you're performing athletically on a fasted stomach. Like you don't wanna have to have eaten, uh, you know, at least with, with several hours before your workout, but then during your, your, your performance, let's say you're, you're playing soccer and it's you know, a two hour game or something like that, or basketball, you want something to help replenish your system. Electrolytes are great, but amino acids even better, right? So adding in some essential amino acids in that case can be really, really helpful. So I find the essential amino acid blends great for athletes, great for people that are very living very active, healthy lifestyles. And then also for individuals that perhaps are older, not getting enough protein in their diet, and are struggling with producing enough stomach acid and struggling with digestive health in general, they can utilize these, these essential amino acids, get them into their system so they can stimulate muscle protein synthesis because it's hard for their body to get the protein from the food that they're consuming. So for these individuals, I'm a huge advocate of essential amino acids. It can be life-changing for these older individuals that have digestive challenges and overall health challenges. So those are reasons why we wanna use protein powders. Those are reasons why we might wanna use essential amino acids. Again, you have to weigh out, is the insulin elevation from the protein powder worth it. If you're living a very active lifestyle, if you're working out uh, regularly, you're really trying to build muscle tissue, I think it's fine to have some level of insulin stimulation, particularly after your workout from a protein powder. I think that's totally fine. I think uh, it can be all part of a healthy lifestyle. If you're somebody that's not exercising, that maybe has struggled with insulin resistance, that um, you know is not very active in general, and you're thinking about adding in protein powders, I don't think it's the best idea. I think. For, for that sort of individual, I think uh, getting a whole food based high protein diet is more beneficial. Okay, again, the caveat being if you're very compromised digestively, if you have trouble putting any sort of weight on, if you're looking very, very thin, very lean, low stomach acid, when you eat protein, you don't feel good, then using something like an essential amino acid mix and or using protein powders can be really, really beneficial. So hopefully, that clears up the confusion on the truth about protein powders. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my channel, browse the various videos that I've done on similar topics, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video training. Thanks so much for being a part of our community here, and I really hope you enjoy the videos that we're putting out on a regular basis. Be blessed.